Can anybody lift up their hands and give God some praise right where you are? Can you just shout if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side? Can anybody just look back over your life and say he brought me through that? He brought me through that and he brought me through that. And because he did all of that, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Can anybody say, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Can anybody say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Can anybody testify? Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, put your hands together and let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I want to thank you and praise God for all of you who are watching today. Welcome to Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church in Houston, Texas. I want you to center yourselves as we come together to share a word from the Lord. Prepare your hearts. Center yourselves as we pray like we always do. I'm excited about today. God has a word for you and your family. Let us pray. Gracious God, may your spirit give us strength. Unite us in your truth and love. Help us to show love to others. We pray for peace, for goodwill among the nations, and for the well-being of all people. Oh God, we ask your prayers for the sick, for the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Oh God, we pray for all who seek you. We pray for those who desire a deeper knowledge of you. Open up our hearts to receive you as spirit and truth. We thank you that not even death can separate us from your love. We pray for all who mourn that they may feel your care and love for them. Those things, oh God, that we have prayed for, give us grace to work for, and in the purpose of your love, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you so much for being here with us today. Wherever you are watching, share this with your family and your friends. Start a watch party. I believe that this is going to be a blessing to you. So invite them to check us out on Facebook at Boynton Chapel UMC-Houston or on YouTube at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church, Houston. We want to connect with you. We want to let you know that we, are, we care for you and we want to know where you're watching from. And if you are in need of prayer, please call the church at 713-748-6066 and we will pray for you. I am grateful to all of you who are participating in our virtual small groups. Boynton has some amazing opportunities for you to connect to others, to have some great conversation about where you are in life. I promise you that these small groups will be a blessing to you. Now you may be asking, how can I get more information about the church? You may get our free text alerts. All you have to do is text Boynton to 31996. Again, text Boynton to 31996. We are so excited. We have established a strategic planning team. We are reimagining how we will be able to come back into this space. 
And we want you to know that we are taking every precaution to make sure that your return to in-person worship will be safe. We're not sure when we will be able to return, but we are thinking through what Boynton post-pandemic looks like. What an awesome day we had on Wednesday. We provided 133 boxes of food and a hot meal from Ray's Barbecue to the senior citizens of Third Ward, and we would like to thank all of our partners for their support. We also want to thank you for joining us on, for Worship Wednesdays at 6 o'clock p.m. Worship Wednesday is our time in which members of our congregation share with us how God is moving in their lives during this season. So we invite you to turn in, tune in every Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. We're going to prepare our hearts to worship God in our giving today. We thank you for your continuous generosity, all of the ministries that enable Boynton Chapel to be the hands and feet of Jesus are made possible through your dedicated giving. So we invite you to make a contribution through Zelle at BoyntonChapelUMC at gmail.com or through Givelify at Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church. Or you may mail your offering to Boynton Chapel UMC Houston at 2812 Milby Street, Houston, Texas, 77004. As always, we are thankful for your continued commitment to the mission and ministry of Boynton Chapel United Methodist Church. And after the sermon, please stay tuned for our worship and arts presentation of Tide, written and directed by Crystal Ray and starring Jason Carmichael from the Houston Ensemble Theater. Grab your Bibles. I want to read for your hearing Romans 8, 35 through 37. That's Romans 8, 35 through 37. I'll give you a minute to grab your Bibles and prepare for the word. And it reads as follows. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Church, as our nation continues in a season of extreme instability, I would like to offer you this word of encouragement. You see, I discover with great assurance and optimism that the, I am more than a conqueror. You see, church, it is a statement of victory. Truth be told, we all need to decree and declare that we are more than a conqueror. Too many Christians live lives with defeat. Too many believers walk around with their heads hung down, with frowns on their faces, and possess a pessimistic outlook of life. Too many believers lack confidence because they lack power. Sometimes we act like we don't know who we are. We have allowed stuff, issues, and problems to drown our affirmations, our inspirations, and promises. Our destiny has been overshadowed by our doubts. Our smiles have been hijacked by our sorrows. Our praise overshadowed by our pain. Our hope stolen by our hopelessness. Our celebration hiding behind our circumstances. But Paul doesn't just say that we are conquerors. He said we are more than conquerors. To conquer means to be completely victorious, to carry away an overwhelming victory. It literally has the idea of us being super conquerors. Paul doesn't just say we are just conquerors, but we are more than a conqueror. 
We are super conquerors. He writes that we are super conquerors. He uses a tense that suggests a present tense, an active situation. In other words, he is saying that Christians keep on winning a glorious victory. He keeps saying that we have, we're winning victoriously. He is saying that even when everything in life seems to be going against us, we are still super conquerors. Regardless of how things feel to us or look to us, we are still more than conquerors. Our prayer should be that we would accept by faith the promises of God concerning the victory we have in Jesus. Our prayer should also be that God will help us to live out that victory every day in spite of how things look to us or how we feel about our circumstances. We need to come out of that victim mentality for we are victorious. I know nobody will help us when we're going through, but we need to understand that we are more than conquerors. Do you know who is on the inside of you? If you are sick and you need a healing, are you going to be sad until you get the healing? You're waiting on a financial breakthrough and it hasn't come through. What are you going to do until you come out of that? Paul is having a conversation with the church at Rome in preparing them for persecution. Paul says in all these things, we are, that it is critical. It is not what you do, it is who you are. He attaches this to their identity. You are a conqueror. Why would he have to tell somebody this? You can be somebody and you don't know who you are. You may say, I am not a conqueror, but God says that you are more than a conqueror. So God wants us to walk in victory right now. Walk in the power of his authority right now. Walk in joy right now. So when the disappointments of life come raging like a fierce storm, we need to know that we are more than a conqueror. When life throws us a curveball, you need to know that you're more than a conqueror. Quickly, three points that I have for you on today. The reason why we are more than a conqueror is because we have a new position. The believer has a new position in Christ. We are more than a conqueror because Romans 8 and 1 says, we have no condemnation. We have been found free, innocent from the bondage of sin. We have been justified, liberated, and set free. Some of you still feel like you have not been justified and have not been set free. But can anybody shout in this place, shout where you are, Say, I'm more than a conqueror. Our position is because of what Jesus did on Calvary. Jesus nailed everything that held us down to the cross. When Jesus got up with all power in his hand on Resurrection Sunday, we don't have to wait until Easter gets here. We can shout right now, I am more than a conqueror. Stop walking around defeated. Stop listening to the naysayers. You have to understand that you have a new position because you have been set free. But also understanding that you have a new position, but you must understand that you have new power. Paul says our new power is the Holy Spirit who dwells with us and in us. And that spirit of God leads us and it guides us and directs us and teaches us. Some folks want to control their own destiny, but I encourage you this morning to let the Holy Spirit guide you for something greater is on the horizon. But not only new power, not only new position, but you have new confidence. 
We have new confidence because Roman 8 and 28 tells us, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What is the new confidence that causes us to be more than a conqueror? It is the confidence in knowing that God causes everything to work together for our good. Regardless of what hand the world deals you, we are not defeated. We are overcomers. Church, no matter how dark the night gets, we are not defeated because joy cometh in the morning. No matter what the re doctor's report says, we are not defeated. For whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. You see, church, we are more than conquerors. Satan lacks the power to defeat us. Not only are we more than conquerors, we are somebody in Christ Jesus. Let me end by saying we are blessed, we are victorious, we are highly favored. Can anybody say right where you are, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can anybody say right where you are, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Can anybody say right where you are that nothing can separate us from the love of God? Tribulations, distress could not do it. Persecution cannot do it. Famine cannot do it. Death, principalities, nothing can separate us from the love of God. I'm so glad that afflictions can't even do it. Disasters can't do it. Storms can't do it. Trials and tribulations can't do it. Pain can't do it. And surely I want to let you know this morning that this pandemic can't do it. For nothing is able to separate us from the love of God. For we are more than conquerors. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Miss Sasha Mitchell, classically trained flutist studying music at Sam Houston State University.
We don't go to that church anymore. Uh, they built it back up, but we ain't go back. My oldest, she's only the oldest by a couple of months, but she got all the marks of being the firstborn. She never wants us to help her with anything. She always looking down the road to see what's next. <laughs> only time she's not that way is on Sunday. Each time it's the same. My brothers escort us. One stands out on the street. The other stays at the door. And the other comes in the sanctuary, but he stays at the back. It's been that way ever since the bombing. No convincing them otherwise. So we go, but I don't want to. I don't want to be sitting in nobody's pew. I don't want to be singing. I don't want to be preached at. And I tell my wife and baby girl to go to the bathroom before we leave. Because if you find you can't hold it, there's no going here. We, we, just, we just get up and we go home, that's all. And they don't fight me on it. They're scared of the bathroom too. Which usually means we Leave most times during the altar call, which be another two hours long anyway. I don't want to go. 
The only reason I do is because the last time I didn't, I lost the ocean. What a man do if he lose the ocean and dry land. So I go, but I don't want to. And that's why I thought my baby girl was holding my hand. So it's about three or four months we've been going into this church. Leaving early like we do. And just as we step over the threshold onto the sidewalk, I hear her breathe out. So I think back over the whole church service and I realized that she was holding my hand for the whole two hours. And as time went by, she was squeezing it harder and harder and she was crushing me. I know this because every Sunday for about an hour after service, my hand is throbbing. She crushing me because she's holding her breath like she's underwater. And the first thing I don't understand is how in the world is she holding her breath for two hours? No Negro sermon is shorter than two hours. And, and why ain't I noticed that she ain't been breathing? Ain't been breathing for three or four months. Next Sunday come. This time I'm ready. So I lift up my oldest and I set her on the table. So we hear. And I do for my 11 year old the same thing I used to do for those children who pay me money to interpretate their dreams. I looked her in the eye and I lied. God come to me in a dream. He say, tell your daughter I'm sending three angels to her home. I say, thank you, Lord. That, that's one angel for me and one angel for my wife and one for my baby girl. God said, no, they're all for your daughter. And tell her when she feel like she ain't got no air to shout hallelujah. And the air come rushing in. So we walk into this little church, sat where we sit. And my oldest holding my hand. And she's starting to squeeze it tighter. And I look and I, I see she ain't breathing. So I say, look, there go one of them right there. Now I look in the corner where ain't nobody standing. I say, see him? He's a big joker. He's he taller than me. And she squint. And she's wringing the life out of my hand. And it's real quiet because they're praying over the communion. And she lets out a roar from the bottom of her little soul. Hallelujah. And the place was stunned because Negroes got a time and a place for hollering. They like to wait till the, till the organ be playing and the choir be singing, the preaching is high. <laughs> but my baby girl is roaring. And a couple of folks ran out the building thinking it was going to be bombed. And she's steady roaring. And the ushers are making a beeline because ushers got control issues. And I wasn't going to let her fight for air by herself. So I stood up. And, and she jumped up on the pew. So she almost as tall as me. And we hallelujahed my wife into a fit of a dance. Whirling like a chocolate covered helicopter, arms for blades, <laughs> dress bouncing, hair flinging, and, and people diving out of the way. It was. It was so much noise that my brothers rushed in, ready to kill every Negro in the place. The spirit was high, so high. 
I saw Joshua wipe away a tear. You hear me? Joshua. And, and in the middle of the tambourines and the, and the clapping and the ecstasy, my baby girl, she grabbed my face and she said, Look, Daddy, I'm breathing. This little light of mine, Hallelujah. I'm gonna let it shine. Hallelujah. This little light of mine, Hallelujah. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.